Being loved is the most powerful motivation in the world. Our ability to love is often shaped by our experience of love. We usually love others as we have been loved. Some of the greatest statements about God's loving nature were written by a man who experienced God's love in a unique way. John, Jesus, disciple, expressed his relationship to the Son of God by calling himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Good morning, good evening, and good night. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Crystal. Welcome. Tonight we'll be reading in the Bible on John chapter 13. We'll be discussing God loves us despite what he knows about us. If this is something that you would like to continue to listen to, please proceed. The agenda for tonight on John chapter 13 will discuss God loves us despise what he knows about us. Jesus teaches his disciples strength and accomplishment. And then I will do an overview of the chapter with questions and answers. And before we leave tonight, glory be to God, I will leave you with the verses 27 through 38 for you to meditate on and study on. So I'm going to go to the next slide. John chapter 13, verse one through twenty-two. And it reads, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon, Issachar, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all the things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the mill, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon, Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Jesus said, do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. God said, you call me teacher and Lord and rightly so for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than this master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now what you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Ooh, Jesus, I felt that. I felt that through the Spirit. 
Okay, so it says Jesus knew he would be betrayed by one of his disciples disowned by another and deserted all of them for a time. Still, he loved them to the end. God knows us completely as Jesus knew his disciples. He knows the sin we have committed and the ones we will yet commit. Still, he loves us. How do you respond to that kind of love? Now, when you hear hear this, that what God is saying, no matter what you do, I will still continue to love you. No matter how much sin, how much envy, how much jealous, how much mal malice, how much hate, how much disrespect and disobedience, God said he will still love you, my child. So Jesus was the model servant and he showed his servant attitude to his disciples. Washing guest feet was a job for a household servant to carry out when guests arrived. But Jesus wrapped a towel around his waist as the lowest slave would do and wash dry his disciples' feet. If even he, God in the flesh, is willing to serve, we, his followers, must also be servants, willing to serve in any way that glorifies God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to ask you, my brothers and sisters, are you willing to follow Christ's example of serving? Whom can you serve today? There is a special blessing for those who not only agree that humble service in Christ's way, but who also follow through and do it. Amen. Glory to God. You have to be obedient and be consistent in the word. Don't make a promise and don't say what you're going to do and then don't follow through. If you're going to do it, just do it in silence. Do it in silence because I've been there many times where I have said things and something happened and I wasn't able to follow through. So that's what God meant. Okay. We're going to move to the next one. Imagine being Peter and watching Jesus wash others' feet. All the while moving close to you. Seeing in his master behave like a slave must have confused Peter. He still did not understand Jesus' teaching that to be a leader, a person must be a servant. This is not a comfortable passage for leaders who find it hard to serve those beneath them. How do you treat those who work under you, whether it's your children, your employees, or volunteers? When Jesus responded, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. He may have meant that unless he washed away Peter's sin by his death on the cross, then Peter should have no relationship with him or that unless Peter submitted to him and allowed Jesus to minister in this way, Peter would never learn the lesson of humility. My God. Either way, Peter seemed to guess the significance of of Jesus words but he then wanted to be bathed completely not just my feet but my hands and my head as well after he had said this Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified very truly I tell you one of you is going to betray me his disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant one of them the disciples whom Jesus loved was reclining next to him Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Ascara. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him my God, Jesus. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had a charge of money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. No, God was, God was telling the Satan, the devil, do what you got to do. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. 
When he was gone, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times, Jesus. Okay, so John described, sorry, Judas was not the obviously, edit it out. Okay, so Judas was not obvious, <laughs> edit that out. So so Judas was not obvious betrayal. After all, he was the one the disciples trusted to keep the money. The honored guest at a meal was often singled out in this way. Satan's part in the betrayal of Jesus does not remove any of the responsibility from Judas. Disillusion because Jesus was talking about dying rather than setting up his kingdom. Judas may have been trying to force Jesus' hand and make him use his power to prove he was the Messiah. Or perhaps Judas not understanding Jesus' mission no longer believed Jesus was God's chosen one. Whatever Judas thought Satan assumed that Jesus' death would end his mission and thwart God's plan, like Judas, Satan did not know what Jesus' death was, the most important part of God's plan all along. So John described these few moments in clear detail. We can see that Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew about Judas and about Peter, but he did not change the situation, nor did he stop loving them. In the same way, Jesus knows exactly what you will do to hurt him. My God. Yet he still loves you unconditionally and will forgive you whenever you ask for it. Jesus couldn't understand this and his life ended tragically. Peter understood and despite his shortcomings, his life ended triumphantly because he never let go of his faith in the one who loved him. To love others was not a new commandment. But to love others as much as Christ loved others was revolutionary. Now we are to love others based on Jesus' sacrifice, love for us. Such love will not only bring unbelievers to Christ, it would also keep believers strong and united in the world hostile to God. Jesus was a living example of God's love as we are to be living examples of Jesus' love. Jesus love, not nobody else love. Jesus says that our Christ-like love will show we are his disciples. Love is more than simply warm feelings. It is an attitude that reveals itself in action. How can we love others as Jesus loves us? By helping when it is not convenient, by giving when it hurts, by devoting energy to others, welfare rather than your own, by observing hurt from others without complaining or fighting back. Some people only want to come around when it's convenient for them. This is the kind of loving that is so hard to do. And you know why it's so hard? Because we are fleshy. If we were more like Christ, it would be easy, peasy, breezy. You would have a problem with it. Stop being selfish. Stop being messy. Stop gossiping. Stop running from this end to the left to that end to the right, telling what you heard from John and who else. This is why people notice when you do it and they know you are empowered by a spiritual 
source because you do it off the strength of Christ, not off the strength of yourself and your flesh. Flesh have too many feelings, have too many emotions. Trust God. The Bible has another beautiful description of love. And you can find it in 1 Corinthians. Look down in my description. Peter proudly told Jesus that he was ready to die for him. How many people are ready to die for Christ? That just don't go for y'all, it go for me too. I'll wait. But Jesus corrected him. He knew Peter would deny that he knew Jesus that very night to protect himself. And why did Peter do that? Because he was afraid. Did you really put all your trust in God? Why would you betray Jesus after all he has done and blessed and helped you and you witness it? In our enthusiasm, it is easy to make promise, but God knows the extent of our commitment. Paul tells us not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Instead of bragging, demonstrate. So instead of bragging, demonstrate your commitment step by step as you grow in your knowledge of God's word in your faith amen so that is going to complete this uh reading for tonight i'm going to go to the next slide i would like to tell each and every one of you peace and blessings um take care of your loved ones yourself be kind to one another help someone else come to christ you know how it was when you first learned Christ and heard the word of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So help one another. Bring more people into Christ and preach the word. Teach them. It's not always about what I know. I know more than you. I worship more than you. I praise more than you. I glorify God more than you. No, them your words. Them not God's words. And that's not how God want us as Christians, as fellow brothers and sisters through Christ to act. We need to act as queens and kings of our Father God. Amen. So I will be doing these readings Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I also wanted to say thank each and every one of you that have been coming into my live streams, sharing out my videos, and commenting on my videos. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. Thing that I wanted to say. So, if you, down here at the bottom where you can see, it says volunteer to do a Bible study, devotional read, or anything to do with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Let me know so I can be there to support you if you're going to do it on Instagram, if you're going to do it on Facebook, if you're going to do it on TikTok, wherever you're going to, whatever platform that you're going to be on and you're going to be worshiping uh, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, email me or if you're not following me, follow me on Instagram. That way you can DM me because I really do appreciate you and I want to grow in Christ with my brothers and sisters and more godly people that are following christ okay amen so yes do that and i will see you all in the next one y'all have a good night and stay blessed say your prayers peace